Well, you do. You have to memorize it. I'm going to teach you how to do that in just a second. But also, also, the signs, positive and negative. Your positive and negative signs kill you guys. They kill you. They murder your problems. I see it all the time. They murder your problems. You've got to know that when you square something, you're not going to have a negative anymore, right? Even if the negative's in there and you square it, you're not going to have a negative anymore. This is B squared in parentheses. Minus 4AC. You're going to have negatives over here. You've got to know when you have a negative and you're subtracting, it becomes a plus, right? When you have a negative and there's no negative over there, or two negatives, you're actually subtracting that. You know that the A here is a number. You're going to have to multiply that thing. Negative, negative, that could change it into a positive right there. So you have to watch your signs very carefully. That's the only thing that can really happen. Let's do one example. I'll give you a way to memorize this formula, and we'll be done. So I'm going to leave the quadratic formula on the board over there. We're going to identify that any of these problems can be solved with that. For example, 2x squared plus 9x plus 10 equals 0. All you need to be able to do is use the quadratic formula. Find your a, b, and c. Now, first thing, could you do this with factoring? I don't know, maybe. Maybe you could, but it has an extra step on it, right? That's not going to be that fun. Could you do this with completing the square? Absolutely. Every problem can be done by completing the square. That, that works all the time. However, I'm going to tell you something. If you can't factor it in less than 10 seconds, and it has the number up front, you're definitely not going to be completing the square. If you can't factor it in 10 seconds, you should have two options here, factory or quadratic formula. If you can't factor it in 10 seconds, can you factor that in 10 seconds? Ready? Go. 1, 2, 3, 4, seriously, think about 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Have you factored it? Okay, then skip it. Then go to quadratic formula. I'm serious. I'm serious. If you cannot factor a problem in 10 seconds, you're wasting too much time on it. Factoring should be quick or you skip something else that works faster. You with me? That's the idea. Don't use completing the square. That way it takes way too long. All I need you to do is find your A, your B, your C, everybody. What's your A? Two. Two. Just the coefficient. This has no variables in it, folks. Are there any X's? Yes. Are there any X's? No. No. A, B, and C are the coefficients of your problem. A is the number. B is the number, and C is the number. What is your B? Nine. What is your C? Ten. Make sure I get that one right. Yep. We're going to take these numbers, plug them in there. Do you see your A, B's, and C's? We know our A, B, C's. We're going to take these numbers, plug them in for these letters. Let's see if we can do it. X equals negative B. What's negative B in this case? Then I have to have what, folks? It is a formula. It does not change. And then a square root. In the square root, you're going to put, and I want you all to do this just to make a habit of it, parentheses squared. That's going to be in parentheses. It means whatever you have, you're going to square it, positive or negative. What goes inside the parentheses? Nine. 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 Be squared. Be squared. Minus four. Four doesn't change. Four AC means four times A times C. How much is your A here, ladies and gentlemen? Ten. Times C. What's C? Ten. All over two times what? Two. Two, two. two times two. Raise your hand if you see where those problems come from. Keep your hand up if you understood where this formula is coming from. That's kind of important too, right? You know where it's coming from. It's completing the square. So we know our A, B, and C. We can plug those things in. Or we'll work this thing out later. I'll work that thing out tomorrow. We'll do maybe three or four examples and we'll be done. Now, would you like to learn a song on how to complete this thing? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll do it, but you're going to do it too. And if you don't, I'm going to turn the video and watch you as you do it. Here it is. Now, don't say you don't know lyrics because the lyrics are on the board. All right, this is it. Here's how it goes. And you're going to hate me. You're going to hate me around Christmas time. I, I promise you will because here's what. You never forget this. It's going to be in your head forever. Here's your lyrics. This is your, your pass out of class. If we do it good, we'll, we'll get to leave. If not, we'll be here all day. Ready? Here we go. It goes. I don't have the best voice, so don't laugh. X equals minus B plus or minus radical. B squared minus 4AC all divided by 2A. <laughs> yeah, you like that?
that? I'll do it one more time and you guys will come in. Ready? X equals minus B plus or minus radical B squared minus, why don't you put it on? Four is divided by two. Hey! You like it? Now we'll do it together. Ready? One, two, are you ready? The, the words are here. One, two, three. X equals minus b plus or minus radical b squared minus 4ac divided by 2. Hey, one more time on your own. I'll start you off. One more time. Ready? One, two. X equals minus b plus or minus radical b squared minus 4ac divided by 2. Hey. It's not 2a. 2a. Okay. All right, so if you remember from last time, we're working with the quadratic formula. Last time, we kind of invented this formula together. Hopefully, you, you remember how to do that. Uh, you don't need to do it yourself, but remember where this formula came from. This is basically, we completed the square once and for all on a general equation, and that gave us this nice formula that has no x's in it, just a, b, and c, which are the numbers that correspond with coefficients in any quadratic equation. So when we do our problem, of course, the only thing you need to be able to do to get this right is be able to identify a b and c when you are in standard form. So notice, do you have to have zero on one side for this to work? Yes. Yes, you do. Otherwise, the signs for your a, b, and c will change. Do you see that? It's going to be negative over here. We, we don't want that. We want the correct signs for each of these. It has to be in the correct order, x squared, x number. The zero is going to be on one side. That's how you find your a, b, and c. Now, you're okay with that. You sure? So just like most of the quadratics, we are going to get zero on one side and all everything else on the other side. The only time we did not do that was with completing the square. That was a special case. Okay, you need to be focused up here, folks. All right, that's it. So we found that our a is 2, our b is 9, our c is 10. We take those numbers, we substitute them in that formula, and we get down to this far. I think that's where we stopped last time. Is that where we stopped last time? Let's continue, because I told you, as long as you, everyone's going to be able to find a, b, and c, everybody's going to be able to do that. Almost everybody's going to be able to plug them in here correctly, unless you just completely forget the song I taught you, or completely forget how to substitute numbers. This is going to be right for 95% of you. Right, for 95% of you, you're going to be just fine on this. The problem happens when you start doing the actual mathematics. Signs happen, simple math errors happen. That's how this thing gets messed up. So we're going to go nice and slowly. You're not going to rush through this stuff. All right? You're going to have plenty of time on your test. Don't rush it. Don't rush it. Go slowly. Use a calculator if you want to. I don't care what you use. Just make sure your, your, your simple mathematics here is accurate. So we're going to go through. We know the negative 9. You're going to leave that. So we go x equals negative 9 plus or minus radical 9 squared, 18 or 81, which one? 81. Notice that you're squaring this number, it will always be positive for this portion. If you get a negative number here, well, chances are you've probably done something, actually, you've definitely done something wrong. If you get a negative after you square something. Now this, yeah, that can be negative. We're not squaring anything over here. This is minus, how much is that? All over the square root of 2 times 2, I'm sorry, uh, all over 2 times 2, which is 4. Still okay so far? So we're going step by step. We've just done, this was called, oh, what was the inside part of our radical called? The inside radicand. part of, it's usually called the radicand, but in our case we have a special name for the b squared minus 4 <coughs> Discriminant, that's right. This is called the discriminant, we'll talk about that in just a bit, but get that name down in your head. Okay, what next? Inside the yeah, we could probably do that math, right? Those are going to be two numbers. 81 minus 80 gives you 1. Negative 9 plus or minus radical. Don't skip out on these steps. It's important to get all these steps down. Over 4. We're going slowly, that way we don't make any math errors. It's not a hard pro. It's, it's simple math. I mean, you know how to square numbers, you multiply, subtract, and divide. You know how to do that. Just make sure that you do it accurately. How much is the square root of 1? 1. So don't leave it as a square root of 1. Oh my gosh, no, no, no. We're actually going to get two real nice numbers out of this. So the square root of 1 gives us x equals negative 9 plus or minus 1 over 4. I'm not just doing this for your benefit, showing you all the steps. This is how I want to see it. I want to see each and every one of these steps. That's going to make you more accurate. Hey, do I get two solutions? Yep. That plus and minus gives us two solutions. So we're going to get follow the stream, upstream, downstream. You're going to write out both of these before you do your math. 
So check it out. You get negative 9 plus 1 over 4, just like we did before, right? Plus 1, and we're going to get negative 9 minus 1 over 4. The negative 9, that's, that one doesn't change, but we get the plus and we get the minus, upstream, downstream. You guys are up with this so far? Hey, can you subtract and add this 1 from the negative 9? No. Can you do that problem? Yeah. Jesus, I sure hope so. What's negative 9 plus 1? Can you mean? So what, don't hold back on that. You can do that. The only time you can't do that is if you have an i over here or a square root, which is the same thing. So don't forget you know how to do this type of problem. You guys need to be up on the board with me, not looking at other things, okay? So negative 9 plus 1, how much is negative 9 plus 1? How much is negative 9 minus 1? So don't, let, don't make this harder than it is. This is not a hard thing. You're just doing simple mathematics here. Just because this is a quadratic formula doesn't mean you can't add a number. Doesn't mean you can't subtract a number. Okay, so don't stop, don't stop here. Don't stop there. Don't stop here. If you can put those together, then do it. If you can't, well, okay. If this happened to still be a square root, well, okay. You can't do that. But if it's a whole number like we have, well, shoot, we can put those things together and get some real nice answers out of this. What's negative 8 over 4? Can you reduce that? Yep, negative 5 fourths. Negative 5 halves. All right. Would you raise your hand feel okay with this? So what's the hardest part of it? Well, this is not the hardest part. That's probably the easiest part. Paying attention? Yeah. Okay. Plugging this in is probably an easy part. That's not hard. <coughs> Doing the mathematics and getting all the way down to here, ironically, that's the hardest part. And to be honest with you, doing this stuff happens in Math 80, happens in pre-algebra class. You do this stuff. You do the addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. So basically, once we've done this, man, we made this stuff a whole lot easier. This is easier than factory. It's easier than completing the square. It's looking at numbers and plugging in the formula. Are you guys all right with this? Now, what we're going to do today is try a couple more examples. I'll give you some different forms, uh, different ways this can look but we can still use our quadratic formula, okay? So, next example, still kind of basic, basic here. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, look at the board. The first thing I need you to realize is, well, first question I have for you, is this in the appropriate form? Is that how I want it? Yes. Why or why not? Do I have zero on one side? Are they in the correct order? Then great, that's fine. What I want you to do right now is find A, B, and C, write it out explicitly. A equals blank. B equals blank. Write that out. Remember that when you find A, B, and C, it goes with the sign in front of that number. So with that in mind, how much is A, everybody? How much is B? Is it 5 or negative 5? And C? Do I have any X's when I do A, B, and C? You see, A, B, and C are numbers. They're coefficients. So you should never, ever have an X in this formula. What this is doing is taking the values of A, B, and C, the coefficients, using them in such a way that you get your solutions. Uh, the, the completing the square that did that for us. Okay, what are you supposed to do now? Okay, I want to show you how to do this because this is the first time we have some negative numbers. So when I'm taking this and plugging it into my or substituting it into my quadratic.